Hello? Hello, hi, Alan. Hey. Maybe just give it a minute. Okay, well, in the meantime, I'm going to share the agenda. Um, if you can add yourself to the attendees list and add any agenda topics, that would be great. Should we get started? Um, sure. Okay. So, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the meetup uh, this week. So, the plan today is to um, go over. Uh, well, we'll start with an introduction, quick introduction to iterate. And we will go over um, three distinct, uh, very related, but three distinct use cases of Iterate, all of them concerning SLO validation. And the last one is kind of interesting because it does not only SLO validation, but also chaos injection. It actually messes up with your application and you know reveals the weaknesses in your application. So Shubham is here uh, to explain you know the chaos framework and also how it interplays with iterate and uh, that's 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 really the plan if time permits maybe we can look at some of the directions that you know future uh, roadmap directions you know the next uh talks that are coming up um, on the on the iterate front so that is the plan 
So let me share. Let's start with a quick introduction to iterate. Uh, maybe some of you are seeing it uh, for the first time. So Iterate is actually a cloud native to Kubernetes open source Kubernetes release engineering platform. It uh, originated, uh, for, it was originally founded at IBM Research, but increasingly there is greater community adoption and we are seeing sort of uptake from various, you know, IBM projects, IBM products, and also, uh, you know, community partners like uh, Chaos Native, like Selden, like Kif Serving, uh, uh, Bloomberg, uh, and you know other brands and projects. So the primary focus of Iterate is enabling DevOps and SRE teams to optimize, uh, validate, and safely release new versions of their applications. And there are a variety of use cases supported by Iterate. Uh, it includes SLO validation, A-B testing, A-B-N testing with business metrics, uh, chaos injection, which we will see today, dark launches, canaries, progressive rollouts with uh, tra advanced traffic engineering features. So quick look at how Iterate does all these things. So Iterate uh, uh, surfaces a concept of experiment and it has very well defined criteria. First of all, defines what, what is your application? What are the versions of your application? and very well-defined criteria, metrics-based criteria for assessing your application. And uh, it also provides a framework for you know, various tasks that may be uh, used alongside the, these assessment criteria. So you can tell Iterate to send traffic to your applications. You can tell Iterate to, I mean, once it is validated, you can ask Iterate to promote the application, maybe through a Git PR or maybe through a GitHub uh, uh, workflow trigger or other triggers. So uh, the there is a evaluation framework based on metrics, and then there's also a task framework where you can tell Iterate uh, to do things before the experiment, during the experiment, and after the experiment. We are going to use fairly simple applications for today's demonstrations. So these are all going to be based off of Kubernetes you know, services and deployments. However, in Iterate, the concept of an app is very broad. You can really use Iterate, whichever way you are packaging and deploying applications uh, in your cluster, you can use Iterate alongside that. So people are, have tried Iterate with Knative, uh, serverless containers, serverless services, um, KF serving, once again, serverless inference services. This is for ML model serving. Selden is yet another MLOps uh, vendor who has adopted Iterate for their you know, recommending Iterate for production deployment of machine learning models. And basically anything that you can deploy in Kubernetes version and you know, track metrics for, you can essentially use Iterate to optimize that application and to roll out that application. Built-in metrics, we are going to see examples today of how to send traffic and collect built-in Iterate metrics that are latency and error related. Iterate also makes it very easy for you to use if you're already, for example, if you're getting live traffic to your application and if you want, if you're collecting metrics in Prometheus or any other database for that application, Iterate makes it easy for you to use those metrics as part of, you know, SLO validation or A-B testing experiments. So that feature is already there. Uh, we won't see examples of traffic engineering today, but there are plenty of examples on iterate.tools website where you know we are using Istio virtual services, more recently a Linkerd traffic split services, uh, you know, uh, resources to do uh, you know nice things like progressive rollouts or header-based traffic engineering during an experiment and mirroring and things like that. Iterate can be embedded as part of any CI, CD, GitOps workflow. It, it, you can use Iterate to directly send a notification or directly change a Git repo through a pull request by raising a pull request. So there are, once again, there are examples for doing all of the above. And all the analysis for that, you know, Iterate uses 
to recommend or to make decisions. They are all AI driven, statistically robust, under the covers there are some rigorous Bayesian analysis based on metrics, of course, Bayesian analysis and you know banded algorithms uh, that are working to do both the analysis of applications as well as uh, you know optimizing the traffic spec. So it's based on very rigorous um, analytics, statistical techniques, and incidentally, we just had a, uh, a top tier conference paper by ACM accepted uh, from Iterate Project, which you know demonstrates the you know the core analytics functionality of Iterate. So more details will be coming soon on the on the on this paper, and uh, once it uh, appears on ACM website, you should be able to get it. Uh, pretty shortly. Okay, so that's overall about the features of Iterate. Just a little bit about what an, I mentioned Iterate experiments a few times, so let me just describe what an experiment is. The idea is you launch your application version and alongside you launch an Iterate experiment. And the Iterate experiment will, you know, get the metrics. Either it will send traffic and collect built-in metrics or it can collect metrics from existing any databases, use the metrics to assess the versions, and optionally split traffic between versions, and finally, once again optionally, promote the winning version of your application. So this is the entire process that is automated by Iterate, and there are lots of ways in which you can, it's extremely flexible. So you can really control each of these things in a very fine-grained way with Iterate. Uh, Everything you're going to see today is going to be using Helm. The demos that you're going to see today are all going to be using Helm. So the iterate experiments themselves are you know, packaged and templated and will be deployed using Helm. But strictly speaking, Helm is not a requirement to use iterate. Helm does make it easy to template the experiment and make it a bit more reusable. You, know, you don't have to deal with the low-level experiment object. You can just deal with some Helm values and you know, uh, you can reorient the experiment for a different application. Okay, so with that background, let's get started. Incidentally, if you have any questions, I think you can even just, you know, pause and, you know, ask the question even during the presentation. Or if you want to, you can uh, use the, uh, use the uh, you know, the Google meeting to ask the question. Or you can use even better, you can use the Iterate Slack channel to ask the question because you know it kind of a semi-permanent. So your questions and answers will be there on the Slack channel for others to see. So that's also nice. Okay. So let's get started with our first uh, validation experiment. Uh, the scenario is very simple. You have an application and you want to verify that it satisfies some latency and error rate SLOs. And the way you're going to do this is very simple in this demo. We'll create an iterate experiment. We'll create an app. We'll create an iterate experiment for that app. And we will collect metrics. You know, we'll collect um, built-in metrics. In the iterate will do that. So iterate will send traffic to the app. The experiment is going to automate the sending of traffic to the app. And based on the responses, it's going to create some client-side latency and error rate metrics. And then it's just going to assess if the candidate satisfies the SLOs, the latency and error rate SLOs. That's it. Uh, so we will see what more, how you can, you know, extend this experiment in a bit, but let's focus on doing this experiment first. So I already set up my Kubernetes cluster. I have Kubernetes local Kubernetes running. I have it already installed in the cluster. I have a Helm client locally. And I have this tool that we will see read CTL for debugging and you know looking at the experiment results. And yes, yeah, so I already have my iterate local environment also set up. So let's get started. Let's just go ahead and create the application. And it's a very simple hello world application. It's got a deployment and it's got a service. That's all. So let's go, let's look at what this application provides. I'm going to, oh, sorry, keep doing something here. Put forward that application and call it. Hopefully it's running now. Yes. So it's just a hello world. I called it and I got, you know, hello back. <laughs> 
So it's running. Now, time to validate the application. So let's go ahead and create an iterate experiment. Uh, I'm using, as I said, I'm using Helm to run this experiment. Um, what did I just do? So I asked iterate to the experiment, I gave it a URL. This is where the application is available. It's accepting requests. This is the URL where the application is accepting requests. This is the cluster local URL, but strictly speaking, it doesn't have to be cluster local. It can even be a public URL for your applications. As long as you can query it, you can use it as a URL in this template. And we are saying, make sure the application has a mean latency of under 50 milliseconds, there are no errors, and it has a tail latency of under 100 milliseconds. That's the SLOs, very simple SLOs but we just want to make sure that the application satisfies these SLOs. That's what the experiment is going to verify. Okay, so we already launched the experiment. Let's take a look at what this experiment looks like. I kind of just gave a Helm command, but let's look at the manifest that is actually getting deployed. So this is the iterate experiment. And uh, there are two key portions that we can pay attention to. One is this thing called, you know, metrics collect. This is a task that we specified within the experiments. This task is what is going to send traffic to the application. And it's going to do so over a period of five seconds. And at this rate, at, you know, eight queries per second. And you, there are more configuration options. You can configure all this. And the other part, interesting part, is the criteria. So what when what when what is success here? So when can when can you declare this app to be a winner? It will be a winner if it satisfies these objectives, these uh, service level objectives. So that is the definition of the app uh, winning in this experiment. So that's the exper That's really the crux of this experiment. There are a few other things that we have specified, but this is really the heart of the experiment. This experiment. Okay, so let's go ahead, take a look. The experiment probably finished, hopefully finished. And we can use this iterate CTL command line utility to assert that these conditions are satisfied. You know, these conditions are also part of the experiment status. Experiment is a CR, custom resource, and you can inspect the status to get hold of these conditions and verify these conditions, but iterate CTL makes it easy. You don't have to inspect the status. You can directly, you can just, you know, provide this little command, check, yeah, the experiment completed and there was a winner that was found. So it's looking good. Um, let's describe the results of the experiment. It's a bit more detailed description of what happened during the experiment. And now you get a bit more detailed view of, you know, the metrics. So the mean latency, error rate, um, 95th percentile, SLO, everything is satisfied. So all the objectives are satisfied. And metrics look, these are the metrics. So error is zero, error count is zero, mean latency is just a millisecond. Take latency is just a couple of milliseconds. So it's well within your SLO specs. So everything looks good. And, um, okay, we described the experiment, but you can also debug the experiment. So if something went wrong during the experiment, you're getting a result that you did not expect, then you should be able to debug what happened using this, you know, deb and the debug statements have some priorities. So you can just, in this case, I'm saying, give me everything, but you can just give me top priority debug statements. So you can do that also. So here the, it's just saying, there is a statement that says metrics collection completed for all versions. It's just an info statement. It's nothing interesting. Everything went well, that's all. So uh, that's really the crux of this experiment. You know, we launched an app, we launched an experiment, the experiment sent traffic and got back uh, responses using the as responses. It constructed the latency and error profiles and it just ensured that the SLOs are satisfied. So everything is looking good. Um, let's clean it up. And there are a few things here that, you know, next steps that are sort of logical extensions of this experiment. 
uh, you can obviously run this experiment with your own application. This is a hello world service and a deployment, but you know you can target this application to your URL, and the same things apply. You can you know, configure whatever latency error rate that you want to configure as part of the experiment. It's as simple as that. Just changing the values, and you can also we are going to do this now. So you know this application used an HTTP GET endpoint. What if you have an HTTP POST endpoint and that's accepting payloads? So, you know, in MLOps scenarios, you have uh, inference service that is accepting a payload. Even an existent regular application can accept a payload and come back with a response. So we are going to see that scenario next. Uh, you can also uh, couple this scenario experiment that you just saw with chaos injection. This is also something we are going to see today and Shubham is going to uh, help us understand this experiment and show us how this experiment works. And uh, there are a lot more things you can do. We just, you know, put some next steps here. So for example, if you are using GitOps to promote versions, okay, maybe you did this experiment in a staging cluster or in a test cluster, and you're ready to promote this application to a production cluster. So you can do this promotion, for example, in a GitOps way. You can modify a Git repo to do the promotion. And here is an example. We won't go through this example today. Maybe in the next meeting we can. But if you want to try it out, it's already there as part of your, uh, you know, the set of tutorials available today. So you can just go there, take a look, and give it a try. You saw how quick this experiment was. It's really literally, you know, running it took three minutes. That's generally how all iterate experiments, many of those iterate experiments are. In real life, maybe it's going to take longer because you're collecting data over a longer period of time. But you know, trying out the tutorials, really any of these tutorials should not take you more than a few minutes from start to finish. OK, so I am going to move on to the next post experiment. But let's quickly pause, see if there are any questions, comments. Uh, before we jump into the post experiment, feel free to raise anything anytime. Now, okay, so let's move on to our second demo. Uh, it's uh, it is this experiment, and essentially it is the same scenario, um, but the only difference is the app now is not going to do a it doesn't have a GET request. It doesn't accept GET requests. It actually accepts POST requests along with a payload. So we will see how to send a payload as part of the validation uh, uh, mechanism uh, experiment. So almost the same workflow here. And once again, the same setup. Let's see. Let's go this port forward. Uh, I think I cleaned up after my previous experiment, but let's just clean up again, just in case I have any undesirable things running. Good. Everything's cleaned up, so let's go to here. Okay, so um, once again, let's create the application. Remember, this time I'm using this HTTP bin, it's a popular you know, container that you can use to try out different types of simple HTTP services. Uh, once again, let's go ahead, put forward the application. And um, what's going on here? So we want to call the application, you know, send something to the application, send a request. But this time, we want to give it a payload because that's what the you know, the API accepts it is expecting a JSON payload as part of, you know, the request. So let's go ahead and send the JSON payload. Great. So the application is up and running and it is responding to our call and it's coming back with the response. Uh, now let's go ahead and create the iterative experiment. So 
you will notice a little difference here. So in fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the experiment that was deployed this time. Uh, the, first of all, what is the same? What is the similarity, right? The criteria is kind of similar. So you just have, I just increased the SLO limits a little bit. So the HTTP bin is a little slower. So it's now 100 millisecond mean latency and 200 um, millisecond tail latency is the SLOs that I'm specifying. I still don't want to see any errors. So I want zero errors. Um, now, in terms of the metrics collection, we kind of just it up a little bit. So now it's sending 100 queries at a rate of eight queries per second. But what's interesting is that this time it's also sending a payload along with a content type, right? So it's going to use a JSON payload. And here is the URL where the payload actually you know, resides. Either it will pick up the payload JSON file from this location and use it you know, as part of 100 requests to send the request to this, you know, post endpoint and collect the metrics back. So uh, this is about, you know, the experiment itself. This is how the experiment looks. Once again, it's a very simple experiment. There is nothing fancy going on. It's just, you know, this is the SLO criteria and this is the task that is going to send the requests. Once again, let's go ahead and observe the experiment. Okay, good. This experiment also completed and there is a winner. And let's go ahead and describe the results of the experiment. Very nice. So 100 requests, tail latency is under, you know, eight seconds, about eight seconds, mean latency is about five seconds. Everything is looking good. All the you know, SLO conditions are satisfied. And once again, there's not much to report in terms of debugging information. The experiment actually worked the way we expect it to work. So the debugging is not that interesting. So this is what metrics collection worked. That's all. So that's really about this experiment. Uh, very simple. You have two applications accepting get and pull requests, iterate, sent the requests, collected you know, responses, built the latency profiles, validated SLOs. And now this application is maybe ready for promotion to production. That's the idea. And there are examples of how you can do the promotion in many ways, in, in cluster ops, GitOps, lots of different ways to do the promotion. Okay, so let's uh, pause here. Uh, before I hand off to Shubham, any questions? No. Okay. Shubham, all yours. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Shubham, software engineer at Chaos Native and contributor to Litmus Chaos. I'm sharing my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, I think so. OK. So my, uh, like, today is it? The... Uh, so, sorry. Oh, yeah, now it's visible. Sorry, it took a little bit of time. Yeah. OK, OK. So my topic is, uh, is SLO validation while injecting chaos. So we are going to use iTrade for the SLO validation and uh, Litmus for the chaos injection. So we already see like how it is uh, defining uh, the SLOs and how we are validating it. So now we will go to the litmus, like uh, how we, like what is litmus? I will go for the brief introduction before going to this demo. So litmus is a chaos engineering tool. We can inject different type of chaos. We can we can see the like we have around fifty one experiments. So we can inject anyone on any any one of these experiment and like uh, and uh, like check the resilience of the application so we have a different application uh, pod level node level and kubernetes and non kubernetes as well so we can use any one of them so i will just quickly go through the installation path so litmus can be used in two ways one is uh, litmus 2.0 which is a ui driven approach so where we can 
we have a chaos center or litmus portal where we can directly create the workflow and define the uh, workflow where we can like define the application details and what are the experiments we want to perform in serially or parallel order and then we can tackle run from ui and there is a, a observability integration as well so we can see everything in the chaos center itself so it is single source for everything uh, and the second uh, way is uh, using litmus 1.0 where we it is more of a like command line based approach where we we are uh, like creating the the like resources using the gml and we are creating using the kubernetes commands so as part of this demo i will use the litmus 1.0 so i will create the custom resources by myself so i'm so the, I, i'm just sharing the link in the chat so you can also go through the docs and uh, i mean it also uh, like you you can okay let me so at pass of this demo i'm you're going to use the pod delete experiment which is one of those uh, list and what we are going to do we, we are deleting the pod and at the same time we are validating the slos so in the uh, while uh, deleting the pod so how the our slo will behave we are we are collecting the metrics and how it will be behave. so as part of this so there are some prerequisites so i already installed the litmus and iterate so we can verify the installation so i'm using uh, eks cluster so we can verify in my local so we can see the control plane uh, pods for the iterate so both are in running state and iterate also using two crds so we can verify the crds as well So I did use the CRD. So first is the chaos. Uh, first is the normal experiment. So which bind the application with the uh, SLOs. So we can define the. Uh, we can provide the application details and all the objectives inside the experiments. And uh, while we are validating, and the another one is the matrix. So we are creating the matrix CR. So we uh, I did some support some built-in matrices. so iterate support uh, these these are the inter, uh, like when we install the iterate we get we got these uh, matrix we can, which we can use uh, to validate our ex uh, experiments or the application resilience uh, whether it is uh, satisfied or not so these are all the matrix i'm going to use uh, uh, these matrix only for my validation so next part is the installation of the application so i will just going to install the hello world application we can see the hello world application is already running we can okay this is the same application which we use in uh, like uh, like last demo but i can again try to like check for what what it is doing this is the like hello same hello world application with version 1.2 and it is printing the host name so now we we have already installed the application now we can, uh, we, we need to install the iterate and litmus uh, experiments together so uh, this will install these four uh, crs and uh, crs and resources so first one is the iterate experiment so which is the same like uh, here we we define some readiness so like it will wait until the hello uh, deployment and hello service uh, should be in ready state so it will wait until they are not present inside the cluster so next one is the vp providing the application url here and it will collect the metrics from this url and it is uh, sending uh, eight query per second for the 30 second so we are collecting for the 30 second so we can provide these value based on our use case and next part is the objective so we can define our objective so i am using these three uh, metrics for the and i am defining some values so one is the mean latency then another one is the error rate and next one is the 95 percentile of the latency so i am uh, providing these value uh, like while installing it from hub uh, from helm so this is the application url so this th these are the like application namespace and label which is needed for my uh, for the chaos engine and 
this is the url of the application which we will from where we are collecting the metrics and these are the upper bound for those metrics so the mean latency should be less than equal to 50 and the error rate should be less than equal to 0 and uh, this 95 percentile of the latency should be less than 100 to satisfy these uh, for the slo validation and the next resource is for delete uh, chaos engine so this chaos engine bind the application with the for delete experiment so as part of this uh, demo i'm going to use the for delete experiment so we can see we provided the application detail here so it contain the application name space which is default name space these uh, this is the application label which is the label of the hello world application uh, deployment the next one is the kind which is the deployment and i'm using the for delete service account so we need to create the uh, for delete service account which contain the minimal permission to run this experiment and these are some tunable which uh, which will tell like uh, the total chaos duration for which we want to run what is the chaos interval so uh, like it it will uh, delete the uh, pod base, uh, like after in each 4 seconds for the multiple iterations so next one is the pod delete experiment so we see in the hub so hub contain all the static information for the like experiment so it contain the scope of the experiment whether it is a namespace scoped or it is a cluster scoped or this these are the permission so the permission the abec permission which is needed for the experiment the next one is uh, image and image pull policy and the uh, argument and commands then these are the envs so these are the tunable which is needed to run the experiment for example in my case i'm these are the default values which uh, which we we are pulling but we can override these value from the uh, chaos engine so we see here we provide 15 second by default values 15 second but our use case we need 60 seconds so i overrided this inside the chaos engine so we see the total chaos duration the duration for we want to inject the chaos then ram time is basically that uh, like for some use case if we want to uh, like wait uh, like before injection of the chaos and after injection of chaos if we want to wait for some time then we can use this ram time this is the force so if we provide the force as true then it will forcefully delete the pod and if we will provide it as false then it will gracefully delete the pod so this is the chaos interval we can override all these value from the chaos engine this is the pod affected percentage so basically when application uh, labels uh, like we provide the application label so if there are multiple uh, application which is running with the same label uh, means like if if i have a multiple replica of the same uh, deployment then and i want to choose specific percentage of those so i can provide the percentage here and and the default value of this is one replica only if i have not provided it will be one replica otherwise it will be based on the percentage and the next one is the target pod uh, so if we will not provide the target pod it will choose a random pod and it will delete them if we will provide the target pod then it will delete the specific pod only it will not delete and this is the sequence and uh, the sequence can be parallel or serial so it will either delete or inject the chaos in the sequence when the, uh, when the multiple target is there or if the multiple target is there we can also in, uh inject in parallel so default value is parallel so next one is rbec so we need the pod delete service account for the injection of the chaos so it contain same the permissions which is required for the experiment to uh inject the chaos so these are all all the resources which is installed by uh the helm so we can install it so our like uh, experiment is started so we can see the pod delete experiment started and the uh, hello hello pod is sta started one second ago so the chaos injection has been started at the same time the iterate is also uh, validating our slos so we can we can check the uh, status of the result so whether it is running or it is completed so we can see it is in running state so it might take uh, if we we have provided 60 second so it might take some time Uh, for the like uh, injection of the chaos and the same time we are validating the chaos so it will wait for the chaos duration also we can check this so it will be okay so i think 30 second pass so it it already uh, completed <clears throat> so we can check our matrix
so we, we can see like we define three objectives and only the one of the objective is passed so error rate is less than zero uh, so sorry it is zero only so uh, it, is, it is satisfied then mean latency uh, we, we have defined for it should be less than equal to 50 but we can see the mean latency is 124 which is greater than 50 so that side is failed then next one is uh, 95 percentile of the latency which is which should be less than equal to 100 but the value of the 95 percentile is 1600 so the value is increased because we have only one replica and we are deleting the replica so the replica is not active so that's why uh, we are getting the latency while we are querying it and we are checking the slo so that side is failed the uh, the pod delete experiment is also done so we can also verify the chaos result so the chaos result will tell that like in the beginning and the in the end of experiment the application should be in healthy state so it is passed it means the our application is working like in the beginning and in the end of experiment is working fine but as we see the slo is not validating means while injecting the chaos it is not working as expected so next uh, and we can also uh, see the winner here so here we see no winner found because uh, we, the, all the SLO is not satisfied. That side is uh, no winner found. So we, we will perform the same experiment, but this time we will scale the replicas to two and we will see it. So because now we will we have a two replica of the same application and we are deleting only one replica. So at the at the same time, one replica should be in running state. So I think it should uh, it, it should not it should validate the SLO this time. So I think I can. I can reinstall from Helm and then I can perform the experiment. So I can again uh, start the same experiment for the two replica this time and let's see. the chaos has been started so we can see the we have the two replica of the hello and the one replica is uh, started two second ago so at a one time it will uh, delete only one replica and because we 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 have not specified the name of the pod or anything so it will delete randomly so th this time we see it deleted this replica maybe the next time it will delete the other so it will delete uh, randomly based on the uh, labels so this time it deleted the different replica. So it might take some time uh, for the completion of the chaos. Again, we can check the status of the chaos. So it is, you can check this. The verdict is awaited because the chaos has been not completed and same, it is in running state. So we can wait until it, it, it will be in completed state. We can also verify if, uh, if our SLO validation is completed or it is there. Yeah, so it is already completed. So we can, we can describe it. This time we can see all are uh, satisfied because this time we have a two replica and one replica is uh, available at uh, any moment. So we see the all the like mean latency is less than 50, which is uh, 0 0.7. And the 95 percentile is less than 100, which is uh, 1, 1. 1.6. So all all of our SLO is satisfies this time. Chaos is all, uh, already completed, so we can check its status. We see the verdict is passed, and because. Uh, Because the application come to running state in the pre and post chaos, and we can also uh, for the more like more details, we can describe the chaos result. So we can see uh, other detail as well. So we can see if it is fail like in case of our negative cases, if due to some reason, if there are some dependent application or due to some reason, if we delete the application and it is not able to start, so we can see the fail step here or. And we, if we are defining some probes, so we can see the percentage here and the verdict, whether it is pass or fail, we can see inside the verdict. 
and this is the like cumulative sum of the run so based on this it is passed or failed or stopped then next one is the target so it will uh, it will uh, it contain the detail of the application so it is the deployment we are like we, uh, application under test so it is deployment in the name of the deployment is hello and we are creating the event at different stages of the experiment so for the debug purpose so if you want to check we can also describe chaos engine so in chaos engine also we are uh, creating uh, events at different stages of the uh, experiment so we can if, if we if due to some reason we get some error so we can uh, debug it so we can see we created the events at different stages so like before creation of the experiment we created few events and inside the pre chaos we created and we see the aut is running state inside the chaos inject uh, while we are injecting the chaos we created uh, here so we we can see it is created eight times so because we injected the chaos eight times and the post chaos check also we are we are checking the status of the application which is in running state and then this is the summary of the experiment and after experiment is completed we are cleaning uh, all the help uh, like based on the job cleaner policy we are cleaning up the pods and the next one is the chaos engine completion so we, or we can also uh, see all the experiment status here as well so it is completed and it is passed so here are the, uh, the, the there are the next steps so we have a other experiment also so i am just uses the uh, for the demo i am using i just use the hello world application so you can use your application and you can use any of the chaos like i use the portal it you can use any of the chaos which is available on chaos hub so you can use any other chaos as well and you can uh, like we have some inbuilt metrics inside the iterate so we can use we can define based on our hypothesis we can uh, define our objectives and we can check it out so and then we will see if it is uh, uh, like winner is found or not so we can see the winner this time in case of our two replicas so this time we see all conditions satisfied because uh, all the slo is ver uh, ver uh, verified this time so this is all about demo do we have any questions I have a question, but I'm just waiting if somebody else has. So here's my question. So are are there, I'm sure you have some uh, HTTP stress testing chaos that you can inject. Do you have any, you know, examples of something like that that we can um, try out? Yeah, I'm I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, so we have a like stress chaos. So we we can see we have a, a pod CPU and node CPU and same same we have a for the memory we have a, a pod memory and node memory and see, similarly we have a pod IO stress and node IO stress. So for the stress we have these three experiments and for the HTTP it is under roadmap. So we are also working on HTTP chaos. So it is under roadmap. So it will be available soon. But yeah, for the stress it is there okay okay so that's that's good to know i think the combining you know pod kills is ob obviously a very drastic kind of stress but you know combining the cpu memory stress along with uh, in the uh the type of experiments we just showed i think that also makes sense uh, we also have a disk fill so it is for the ephemeral storage of the pod yeah so yeah, so this can also be used as stress because it is filling the ephemeral stories of the pod. So we can also consider this as a stress also. So th these are the like seven experiments. So four for the four for the pod and three for the nodes. Yep. Any other question? So I'm stop sharing my screen. All right. Uh, I maybe we can briefly discuss what's coming up next. Uh, do you think that's a good idea? 
Yeah, let's do it. All right. So uh, I think next week we have in the next meetup we have a uh, you know sessions or demos planned around uh, GitOps really. So using uh, GitHub Actions to you know triggering GitHub Actions to modify the Git repo or you know directly creating Git PRs in order to uh, you know change the Git Git repo based on the results of the experiment. That's what. I think we are going to see next week. Uh, weeks after that, we are also probably going to see more of the OpenShift, OpenShift GitOps uh, integrations with Iterate. That's also, I think, coming soon in the next couple of weeks. And, um, you know, um, IBM is actually, you know, running this SRE conference called Prevail. So it's happening just around the week of maybe a week after KubeCon. I think it's a week after KubeCon. So every proposal got accepted in Prevail. So we should see an iterate session also in Prevail. So we should hopefully see details of that, you know, timings and things like that show up in the iterate page about iterate's presentation in Prevail. And I think there are also some iterate activities planned around KubeCon time with CNCF. So we should see some of those details also pretty soon. Any other topics, questions, silence? <laughs> it's all right. I think we're good. Yeah, it seems like there's going to be a lot of exciting stuff coming up. So yeah, lots to look forward to. Yeah. Okay. All right, I guess we can just wrap it up here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Alan is trying to figure out. If any other action is possible, but <laughs> it doesn't look possible. <laughs> Shubham, thank you so much, man. It was, it was really nice. It was yeah, really that was a nice demo. Thank you. Nice demo. Yeah. All right, sweet. I guess uh, I'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, thanks, everyone.